Hi, so this is section 3C, and in this section I'd like to briefly expound on this nexus between matrices and the derivative in calculus, or you can call it the differential operator. So as we've seen in the previous sections, I can use matrices to re represent many different diverse processes and phenomena. So to that end, let's see how matrices can actually represent differentiation as we know it in beginning calculus. For instance, we'll just look at some polynomial functions. If I want to take the derivative with respect to x, let's say of the function x squared plus x, those of us that have had some calculus, we use the power rule here and the linearity of the derivative, and essentially, long story short, we get 2x plus 1 and so forth. So I want to show you then how an action, or really a transformation properly put, such as this one, can be, once again, encapsulated by a matrix. Well, if you remember then, when we looked at geometric transformations with respect to matrix multiplication, the goal there was to find this special matrix called the standard matrix of the transformation. Believe it or not, the derivative is itself what's known as a linear transformation. It has a linearity property, as I actually just mentioned in passing. So to find that matrix, what we need to do, let's say with respect to polynomials, is look at the derivatives of a standard set. It's called a standard basis set, once again, of polynomial functions. So for instance, what if I consider the derivative of a constant? We'll just call it c. Well, the derivative, as we know from calculus, is, of a constant is 0. The derivative of x with respect to x, of course, is 1. The derivative, on the other hand, of x squared with uh, respect to x is 2x, and the derivative of x cubed with respect to x is 3x squared. I'm just using something called the power rule in differential calculus. Now I'd like to translate these results into the world of vectors and matrices. So if you remember a few sections back, we talked about how to encode information or the informational content of a mathematical object, such as a polynomial in this case, in the form of a vector. So if you recall, let's just consider sort of the vector space as we've defined it before. Uh, P3, this is the set of all polynomial functions with degree less than or equal to 3. So what I'd like to do is form this matrix, which will be known as our standard matrix for the differential operator, by first converting each of these basis functions into their equivalent uh, vector representation. So for instance, I can write this constant or a constant as um, in terms of a cubic function, right? It would have 0 would be sort of my placeholder for the cubic term, 0 my placeholder for the x squared term, 0. Similarly, my placeholder or coefficient for the linear term, and then I have this constant c. So I could write this constant function in sort of the world or the vector space, if you like, of P3 in this encoded way. In other words, I just sort of place the numbers. Let's just call it the constant c. So c and then the coefficients I write in that order as the encoded form. So this would be an element now of really P3, but now I've written it explicitly as a four-dimensional vector. So we'll say um, as an element of R4. Now I'd like to do that same encoding for each of these functions, and then from there form once again, the standard matrix for the transformation representing differentiation. Gone ahead now and worked out the encoded forms, that is the vector forms of the derivatives of what are called these basis functions for the vector space P3. Again, the set of all cubic or lesser degree polynomial functions. And so for instance, just to make sense of this, you'll recall that when you take the derivative from calculus of a cubic function, the derivative inherently linearizes a function. In other words, it knocks a polynomial down a degree. So if I take the derivative of a cubic or lesser degree function, it'll map to a quadratic or lesser degree polynomial. So here I have then on the left are the derivatives of each of these uh, various basis functions. So if I take the derivative of a constant function, I get 0 back with respect to x. And what I've done is, again, I'm going to take the derivative of a four-dimensional vector, right, as a encoding as a, of a polynomial, and it's going to map to a three-dimensional vector. I'll lose one dimension through this process of differentiation. So if we go on down the list, then the derivative here encoded of, let's say, the function x, right, its derivative is 1. 
one that coefficient is placed in this constant slot here which is this top slot so I have the constant coefficient we read the encoding the linear coefficient and the quadratic coefficient when I take the derivative of a cubic or lesser degree and map it to a quadratic function similarly if I take the derivative of the x squared function well, x squared, the derivative of x squared by the power rule results in 2x, so therefore I've placed a 2 coefficient, the linear slot. Similarly, when I take the derivative of x cubed, the derivative of x cubed, of course, is 3x squared, so I place the uh, coefficient 3 in the x squared slot. Now, by that aforementioned theorem in linear algebra in section 3b, if I want this standard matrix representing, in this case, the differential operator, I look at the actions of all the basis vectors and those images I place as vectors in that particular order as a column vector specifically to form my standard matrix of that transformation. So there is my differential matrix you would call it. So what I want to show now as an analogy to the previous section is then I can perform the action or the operation of differentiation on a polynomial, let's say a cubic or lesser degree function, via a matrix multiplication, specifically by the differential matrix as we've written it on the left. So let's see this action of differentiation through a matrix multiplication more directly with an example. So here we have our differential matrix operator, the standard matrix of the differentiation operator, you can put it. Um, again, this is a matrix. Notice it's non-square. That represents the fact that, once again, we're sort of reducing our mapping or multiplication by dimensions. So I'm going to get, start with a four-dimensional vector and through multiplication reduce it down to a three-dimensional vector because inherently taking derivative linearizes. We lose a degree of a polynomial in the process. So consider the function, we'll say a cubic function again. Uh, I've just made one up here. Uh, 7x cubed minus x squared plus 10. I can encode then that function in the vector form where in particular I write the coefficients in order of increasing powers, right? So there's my constant coefficient. The linear coefficient, notice is a zero as a placeholder, I do need that. Quadratic coefficient's negative one and seven for the cubic coefficient. So just using the rules of differentiation from calculus, if I take the derivative of seven x cubed minus x squared plus 10, again, it's a linear operator, so I take the derivative of each term separately and apply the power rule from calculus. So the derivative of the first term results in 21x squared. Derivative of the second term is minus 2x by the power rule. And the derivative of a constant, uh, 10 in this case, is 0. So now in a similar fashion, let's differentiate using a different mathematical representation, namely matrix multiplication. I take the encoded version of my polynomial, which we have from before as 10 0, negative 1, 7, and I want to differentiate it, so I multiply it by my differential matrix, basically. 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 3. Now it's kind of old hat, right? We're just going to perform matrix multiplication, so I perform a sequence of dot products. So row 1 dotted with this column here, well, everything drops off, so we get a 0. Row 2 dotted with the column results in negative 2 and row three dotted with this column results in three times seven is 21. And sure enough, I get a consistent result. In other words, I get the coefficients, the encoded version, if you like, of the derivative of the original polynomial. So there's a nice example of how we can, in one more instance, represent, in this case, a linear transformation known as differentiation from calculus through matrices.